know what? We're going to keep that in. Just want you to realize the technical prowess of Kyle is is not here tonight. It is just the peach and stuff. And that tiny L, you know what? You should probably take this one, stuff. It's a much bigger L. Yes. The Orlando Magic lose tonight. 136 to 111 to the Sacramento Kings. And it was not good. Unless you're a Kings fan. If you're a Kings fan, you're going to love this wrap-up. Welcome. Uh, yes, normally my co-host, uh, Cousin Kyle, is here running all the bells and whistles. And tonight, he is sleeping because it's a West Coast game. But I'm a late night guy, so I love this 10 o'clock game. It gave me something to do here tonight because I'm always up this late. And man, let's get into it. I wrote some chicken scratching notes, and normally I just go with my stats off my phone. So this is a little bit of what Kyle does and a little bit of what I do. All mixed into the show here tonight. First of all, last time we did a wrap-up um, after the Kings beat us with the buzzer beater. You know, I was an angry man. I didn't think uh, De'Aaron Fox was quite at the star level now. He is. Uh, Got to give him his props. Um, he is definitely looking like a young Dame Lillard of sorts. He just can take over games and really penetrate well. Um, so props to you first off, sir. I wanted to start right there. Hey, it was Star Wars night. So I changed some of my pops over here to Star Wars and put some Star Wars stuff in the background to, to match. Kind of odd for them to select Star Wars night as their theme uh, when that's a Disney property and you've got the magic coming in, but they backed it up. Back that up in a big way. Um, before I get into more of the game, I'd like to throw a little bit more shade, if I may. Or throw some shade. Uh, Demontis Sabonis, your haircut, you look like a little boy. Um, his play is also somewhat of a little boy. He is fundamentally sound, though. Good player. You wouldn't expect any expect any less from the son of, not my Vetus, not your Vetus, but our Vetus, Sabonis. Um, that's an old joke from, like, back when Sports Center used to be cool. The older guys, you might get that one. Um, Kevin Herter, still a little bitch. I'm not really sure how he sees the court on a team with this much talent. Uh, you're talking about Keegan Murray and Sabonis and Fox and Davian Mitchell, Harrison Barnes, Malik Monk. I mean, this team's got a lot of good, fun talent on it. And Kevin Herter just seems like a guy that's like, what do we need you for? Like they even have Matthew Delladova deep on the bench. I'd rather have him in there personally. Um, Trey Lyles. I used to always refer to him as the minivan dad. He just looks like a guy who's, you know, in his mid to late thirties and needs to rush to pick up his kids from soccer practice. And there's going to be real trouble if he doesn't get there on time, but man, he should also now have the nickname magic killer. This guy, Oh, I don't know. He just plays like a different dude. I've seen him play last year when he was with the Pistons and, and now with the Kings, whenever I see him play other teams, he seems like a regular dude. But when the magic are in town, he's like, Hey, 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 I'm going to show out tonight. And that's annoying. Uh, but that seems to happen on the Magic a lot. Um, we saw it happen with some other names that I can't remember right now. But if you're a Magic fan, you're not going to have any trouble coming up with some names of guys that, like, when you open up their card, you'd throw it away. But those guys dominate when they hit the court against us. It just It's really weird how that seems to happen. Um, early on in this game, look, we got off to a, a decent start, scoring 31 points in the first quarter, but they had 41 in the first quarter. They're just blazing out, out the gate. 41 points is too many points to give a team in a quarter. Like, I don't know what happened to our defensive intensity, which is not there anymore. I mean, I love that we're scoring the basketball, but I need more on D. Later in the game, that kind of, like, helped us make a little run, but it wasn't there right then. Uh Let's see. At, at the half, it was 52 to 72. So 72 points and a half is outrageous. This team was blazing. The Kings ended up setting a franchise record for threes in a game. 23 of 43, they went from three-point range. You're not going to beat a team when they're shooting that well and shooting that many. So I'm honestly not that surprised. Um, and you know the magic. We don't like to add the three-pointer to our game. Although we did start to hit some late when it didn't matter. But let me see if I can get the stats up on the three-pointers here. Uh, so the Magic, 14 of 44 from three-point range to match their, oh, sorry, 23 of 46, 50% right on the button from three-point range for the Sacramento Kings. So you're, you're not going to beat a team most nights when you have that going on. Um, they actually beat us in points in the paint, which is not a strength of their game, um, but they were kind of doing whatever they wanted at, at, at a lot of points in this game, which was uh, weird. Um Sabonis is just, he's a soft big man. 
You know, like he he's he's fundamentally sound, but like all you have to do is put a shoulder in him, and like Foltz was moving him, and like even Cole Anthony got stuck defending him and defending him well, and then out rebounded him for for the ball. So like he needs to get tougher if he wants to hit that next echelon of big time player. Like he just he's kind of a he's got a little bit of a softy Mo Bamba vibe to him in that way, but he's more sound in other parts of his game that make him you know a, a legitimate number two option for them. I know. Some people might think he's their number one, but I think it's De'Aaron Fox, and I think he is definitely their good number two piece. Um, definitely exciting for the Kings, and I, as I was watching this game, I was kind of getting a little bit of a vibe like, oh, this is us like next year, right? Like they were wanting to get to the playoffs this year. That was a goal they had, and I feel like that might be us next year. So they made a trade to get better, and I'm thinking that maybe that's coming for us. And if that trade pans out for us, we could be the Sacramento Kings next year because our stars are, are starting to emerge. Theirs are, have emerged. And so it's it's kind of fun to watch them. And you know what else? I know I'm getting off the game track here, which Kyle would hate because I'm not in, in order of my notes. But I think I have my favorite team to, like I've been saying, humble the Memphis Grizzlies in the playoffs. I nominate you, Sacramento Kings. Here, I'll even get out. I'm going to give you the crown. Truly be the Kings. Knock off the Memphis Grizzlies. I could see that happening. Um, let's come. I'm going to, I'm going to have to find this video and replay it um, when that happens. Cause I feel like that's a team that could do it. Right. Cause no one would expect that, but it's completely possible, especially the way they're playing. Um, they had just lost a couple home games. So it looks like they're kind of getting back on track and they played a nice game. Um, Harrison Barnes is God. I have that written down in my notes. Um, 30 points tonight from him, just unconscious. Um, this guy, let's see, what did he shoot from the three-point line? I'm curious because he didn't appear to miss one that I saw. Six of seven from three-point range. Six of seven. That guy's unbelievable, Harrison Barnes. He killed us. Um, it was 107 to 84 at the end of the third. That should kind of be a final score. 84 points is not a lot, but for what we had been seeing, that should have been it. Um, and then we got to that final score of 136 to 111. 136 is just so many points. Like, we got to tighten things up defensively. Um, no free cookies tonight. Loved the commentary from David and uh, Jeff uh, t- talking about the cookies, that if two free throws were missed consecutively by the opposing team, everyone there gets free cookies. And they really turned that into a nice little fun underlying part of the story. I, I got to say, on behalf of David and Jeff, They've been a part of some of these blowouts over the years for sure. And they know how to kind of keep it at least interesting or have some fun with it anyway because, you know, they still got to call the game until the clock reaches zeros. So I appreciated them, you know, having some entertainment value in there. Also, uh, before getting back to the game, they did a uh, Star Wars-themed tricycle race, which I thought was interesting. Um, They had the uh, dance team uh, dancing with uh, lightsabers, which was fun. Um then they did a trivia portion where they had a guy say he was going to be voting for the All-Star game for Paulo, even though he revealed a uh, number one jersey, which is probably a pe- old Penny Hardaway jersey. And it's a little bit like, all right, well, you know, could have could have could have actually bought a number five jersey, but all right. Uh, they also did Wookiee Cam. They did some fun stuff. Um, they, if for anyone who's watching on the NBA League Pass and you get to see all the stuff going on in the stadium, it, it's a fun time for me. I enjoy it. It's way better than the commercials. Uh, you got to see this guy do a duck dive where he jumped in a pool full of like little rubber duckies, and he's supposed to like find you know some you know mini sized basketballs of the of the Kings, and if he finds all three, he wins the prize. And he just got in the pool and like kicked around and like knocked some ducks out. I was like, what are you doing, bro? Like he was doing the backstroke in there and swimming around. And it was like, he never found a ball. It felt like it was a setup for something bigger. And then it just wasn't. And I'm, I would, I don't know what was going on with that. So if anyone knows, throw it in the comments. I have no idea what was going on there. Um, they had acro Brit at halftime. She was dressed up as Ray from star Wars. I'm sure you've seen her act by now. She's one of the, the balancing people that gets up on the two posts and does all kinds of weird acrobatics and then shoots the bow and arrow with her feet. Uh, always an entertaining time. Had a little bit of a Star Wars theme to us. I thought that was good. Uh, what else, where else are we? Da- the dance team, the 916 crew, is not going to be competing uh, against the uh, pacemates for the uh, championship there. I know you guys always want to know 
where the belt lies. I've been watching all the dance teams this year and trying to find my favorite, who I think is the best, kind of game to game. And whoever I decide wins technically has the belt at that time. Right now, it's still the Pacemates. They've had it for quite a while. Um, and I believe they took it from the Atlanta Hawks dancers earlier in the year. So, uh, yeah, let's see. What is an Akpala I wrote down here? Sounds like uh, some sort of four-legged hooved creature that would uh, dwell in Africa. Um, and I don't know. He hit a three at one point. Why not? Everybody was hitting threes. Almost everyone got in on that one. Um, I think that's about the end of my notes here. We can, the, the closest the Magic got in this game was cutting it to 11 um, in the second half there for just a little bit when our defense picked up and we got some points in transition. And that's what really needed to, to go for us. Um, I didn't really like a lot of the stuff I saw from Mobamba tonight. He had more kind of soft minutes where like he couldn't complete jams, couldn't complete stuff. And that's not good for anyone who wants to, to see Mo Bamba stick with the magic or really honestly, it kind of even hurts his trade value at this point. If he's one of the guys in the trading block, just 17 points from Paulo 15 for Wendell 16 from Markel Fultz uh, and 16 from Franz. So kind of a balanced attack there, but not really enough on the bench. She had Suggs chipping in 14 and Moritz with 12. Uh, nobody really outstanding here. Just kind of, this is the kind of points you're going to get when you're getting the kind of minutes these guys had. Um, yeah, it was nothing, nothing really to write home about from anybody here. I did like some of the effort I was seeing from Mark Alfoltz in this one, running around, chasing balls down, getting some blocks. Um, was impressed with some of that. There was a little stretch of the game where Cole Anthony was really doing a lot. Um, even though he only had eight points and, uh, set, but he had seven boards. Um, he shot terribly tonight, three of 13, but, uh, was active and, and, doing something other than scoring, which is nice because uh, that was always, that's been sort of the knock on him is that he can't play D and then he's a little bit of a liability. So it's nice to see him excel in other parts of the game, but can't have the three for 13 shooting, uh, especially on a night where Sacramento is hitting everything. I mean, Sacramento as a team for the entire game shot 53.6%, 52 of 97. So I don't know if you're familiar with this, but 53.6 is over 50%, and that is better than a coin flip. So that means that every shot they threw up had a better than half chance of going in. And it really felt like that. So and to be fair, the Magic shot 41 of 90 for 45.6%, which is a little more normal. Normal, Kings. Chill out. Uh, stuff. Do you have any thoughts? Stuff is kind of speechless here. He did not expect to stay up this late to, uh, see this, uh, lopsided a victory, uh, for the Kings. So the magic will be back in action tomorrow night. So he'll be playing against the Portland trailblazers. If this video all goes well and things go well, and I get this posted up, you know, I'll try to do this again, uh, tomorrow night. It was kind of fun. Haven't watched a game without Kyle in a while, but I love the league pass on on the computer where you don't get the commercials. It's all good. I, I got to hope that the Magic bounce back tomorrow. Ball Ball will be back. Um, maybe that'll help spark something um, in the lineup. But uh, and uh, after that win against Golden State, this is another one of those games where it kind of gets your hope up as a Magic fan. Like, oh, yeah, we're beating really good teams. But then come out and just kind of really put up a stinker against the Kings. And to be actually, you know what? I'm going to take it back. It's a stinker because of the final score, but the Magic didn't play that poorly for all stretches of the game. They had some stretches where they played pretty well. The Kings just really shot the hell out of the ball. Like, you're not going to beat a team that makes that many three-pointers in the game. It's a franchise record for a reason. Our cap is off to the Kings. Our crown is off to the Kings. <laughs> and I think we should just head for the post-game show. What do you think, Steph? Because I think, I think we're done. That was the post game show. What we should do is is leave. Is I think is I think really what we want to say, right? Yeah, that makes the most sense. Hit the command zero. Let's go. Thanks for coming. We'll get it next time. Let's go.